Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today I want to talk to you about calculating the optimal reference ranges for thyroid lab tests. And I'm going to be showing you exactly how to do this on two different lab tests. So we're going to be doing it on free T3 and free T4. And I'm going to walk you through the math, so this is going to be, you might feel like you're back in school a little bit. Um, but it's really simple um, and it's really important and, and the reason we need to do this is because the standard reference range that is provided by your um, the laboratory which provides you your result is very broad and it includes uh, a lot of different people within that broad range and that's how they create the range and so what I'm trying to get you to understand is that you don't want to be compared to a whole bunch of a mix of healthy and unhealthy people in this range instead you want to compare yourself to a tighter optimal range which includes only healthy people so that way you can look at your lab result and determine if it's actually healthy and not just normal so we're looking at the difference between optimal and normal and generally if you've read any of my other uh, if you've read any of my blog posts I generally say something like well if you if you were checking free T3 or free T4 you want it in the top end of this reference range and I usually give a percentage and so today I'm going to explain how I how I look at lab tests and what I do um, now generally I don't I don't always do these calculations because I can eyeball it and kind of figure it out um, fairly quickly but if you're if you're following along and you want to look at your own lab test I think it's helpful to do so that you have an under so that you were on the same page when we're talking about this stuff so let's talk about this so in the example I'm going to be using free T3 first and this is the result and my my advice and recommendation is that you want your free T3 basically as high as you can possibly be um, and I say generally that I like it in the top 30 percent of the reference range and so what does that actually mean well let's figure it out so if you look at if you look at this reference range so here the value means the result of the patient so this patient came in she she had her free T3 evaluated and the result came back at 2.3 and the lab test marked it as normal all right and if you look at the standard range, this is the reference range um, with which the result is compared to. So the reference range goes from 1.7 to 3.7. So as long as, she, as long as you are anywhere between 1.7 and 3.7, you're going to be considered to be normal. The problem is, what if you were 1.8 or 1.9 or 2.0? That's the very low end of that range and not necessarily compatible with a healthy optimal life. And so what we want to do is we want to rearrange this reference range and only and compare yourself to that healthy range so that's the goal here so there's four steps that you want to do um, to calculate this so step one um, basically what I have here is you, ha you have to find the uh, the reference range which is 1.7 to 3.7 in this case yours is going to be different that's why I'm going to show a different example below um, and what you want to do is you want to find the spread between the range by subtracting the top end from the bottom end so in this case it would be 3.7 by 1.7 and which is easy in this case because it's 2.0 and this number represents the total range between the top end and the bottom end of that reference range and it's very big and that's why that's why it's that's why this matters because it's really easy to fall in that range somewhere okay but we're looking for the top 30 percent so that's step one find the range um, take the top end from the bottom end multiply it out find that difference now what you want to do is you want to take that value that you just created in this case it's 2.0 and you want to multiply that by the percentage value that you're looking to obtain so in this case we want to find the top 30 percent of the reference range so you do that by multiplying it by 70 percent this is this is just how I'm recommending it there's different ways to do it but this is how I recommend you doing it so what that does is it gives you um, what well, you'll understand the math as we go here but basically what you're going to do is you're going to take 70 percent because you're looking for anything above 70 percent um, and that's going to be that top 30 percent so if you were looking for the top 50 percent you would want to multiply this value by 50 percent uh, if you were looking for the top 60 percent you'd multiply this value um, by 0.6 which is that percentage value so you're going to take 2.0 and multiply it by 0.7 which it represents 70 percent and that value you get is 1.4 you're then going to add 1.4 in step 2 to the low end of the reference range which is 1.7 okay and that gives you 3.1 and you now have your type you have your new reference range so then you just take so instead of 1.7 to 3.7 the new range is 3.1 which you just calculated and you still keep the top end of that reference range which is 3.7 so the tighter range is 3.1 to 3.7 so now you have which is step four compare your results to this new range that you just created all right so now you can say oh 2.3 even though it's technically normal it's still not 3.1 okay so that's how even lab value is technically within this range 
it's still not optimal and it's still not healthy compared to other healthy controls. So we want that to go from 2.3 all the way up to 3.1. And if you look at that, it still has a ways to go before it's in, inside of that range. You know, you still need to go 0.8, which is a fairly high value when you consider that this range, um, the whole thing is, is 2.0. So, that, okay, that's how you calculate it. I'm going to do one more example to kind of help you understand it. Um, now, we're going to also calculate free T4 in this example. And generally what I say is I like free T4 to be in the top 50% of the reference range in order to be optimal. Okay, so this one's it's, it's a little bit easier to, to understand. Hopefully this will be uh, more straightforward than that last example. But we're going to do the same four steps. So if we look at the range here, the result of this patient was 0 0.95, okay? And the reference range is 0.89 to 1.76. So anything between 0.89 and 1.76 is going to be considered normal. Now right away you can look at this and see that this person is very, very low on that range. Okay, the, you know, 0.89, the difference between 0.89 and 0.95 is very tiny. And so this person is technically normal, but very low on that range. And so instead of comparing this person to that reference range, because they're technically normal, we want to look at this range, redefine it as uh, the top 50% of the range, and then we can compare that result to the new range that we've just created. So again, step one, find the spread between the reference range. So in this case, it's 1.76 minus 0.89. So the top end minus the, bo the, the bottom end of that reference range. And that gives us 0.87. So that's the difference between those two. Then we want to multiply 0.87 by 50% because that's the, the range that we're trying to define. And so then we get 0.435, okay? Then we add 0.35 to 0.89. So 0.89 plus 0.435 equals 1.32. And then all we do is we take that new range and then we just swap out the 0.89 and replace it with the 1.325. And now we have the new auto range of 1.3 to 1.76. And this now represents the top 50% of that standard reference range and is now a healthy range. And then we can compare the result to that. So the 0.95 now is low when you have created this new reference range because it's not what we want it to be between 1.3 and 1.76. It's not anywhere near that. So the whole, the whole value here and the whole idea here is to redefine that reference range by doing some simple calculations and then comparing your result to the new healthier range that you just created. And when I look at people's lab tests, this is what I'm doing mentally just very quickly. Now, again, you don't have to actually do these calculations every single time you look at your labs because you have the benefit of looking at your symptoms and the reference range you know, doesn't have to be calculated right away to figure it out. You, I mean, you could just cut this in half, um, the difference between these two, and kind of eyeball the numbers. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, but what it does do is give you a better idea of where you should be on this. So again, if you don't like math, um, you know, I, I don't know, you, you can do the sort of eyeball method, um, but I still think it's helpful because this is how I look at patients, and this is how I'm determining if their range is actually healthy or not. And so now you have an idea of when I say it's in the top 30% or top 50%, this is what I'm this is what I'm referring to. So um, I'll do some other videos in the future about uh, why I like the free T3 where it is and like I, why I like the free T4 um, where I think it needs to be in the top 50 and so on. And I'll explain those in a little more detail. But if you have any questions about this um, or how to calculate your reference ranges, why you need to differentiate between normal and optimal, please leave them um, in the questions below and I'll do my best to get to those. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.